Now, case studies are a very flexible research method. Um, because of this, they can be used in a wide range of contexts. Now, there are some fundamental types of case studies, but essentially, a case study looks at a case by its name, but you have to decide upon what that case is. Now, it may be looking at an individual student. It may be looking at a class. It may be looking at a school or a country. And you can have multiple case studies where you look at several classes or several students or several countries. But there needs to be something that you're looking at. Um, it may be an educational technology being used in a particular context. But this forms what we call the boundaries of the case study. And they're very important because you're exploring a case. So in your research and in the readers of your research, they need to be very clear about what that case involves. Now, there are some general types of case studies. There are the ethnographic types of case studies, um, historical, psychological, and sociological. There's many other different categorizations of case studies, but that's one common grouping. Now, in terms of ethnographic, you're generally looking at um, how uh, members of the case are interacting with one another in a cultural way. So you're looking at the culture of that case. So it may be the culture of a classroom or of a country or of a virtual reality lab um, and how it's used and the culture that's developed around the, uh, the use of that particular educational technology. Now, we can also look at things historically, how things change over time. So looking at, say, um, electronic whiteboards and how they are um, used in an educational organisation. Let's pick a school as our boundary for our case study. Or we could pick a country, look at how interactive whiteboards are being used in the United States. Or we could do a multiple case study and compare how interactive whiteboards are used in the United States Fiji and Zimbabwe and look at the differences and similarities between the uses in those three cases. So the idea is we frame our case and for a historical um, approach to case studies, we would look at how things are changing over time. So how were things being, how were interactive whiteboards being used 10 years ago? How are they being used now? Then we could also look at it from a psychological um, framing. Now, in this case, we look at the, um, the, the individuals and analyze their behaviors. Now, Piaget was probably the most famous around this, where he looked at his own children and studied them in depth. Um, so we only had two cases in this case, two children, but he developed a very comprehensive theoretical framework around that case study. And then finally, we have the sociological. And this is looking at how different individuals and groupings um, interact with one another, the politics and the uh, power plays and all of those issues that might be occurring with the case that you're exploring. Again, that might be a country, it might be a classroom, or it might be a school, it might be a group of individuals in a classroom. Um, but the idea is that you decide what you are going to explore and then you conduct a case study around that. You establish your boundaries, framing what's not part of your case, and then you try to identify the various patterns and influences and uh, reasons why things are occurring. So essentially we use case studies to answer two questions. What is occurring in terms of a descriptive case study and why it's occurring in terms of an exploratory or explanatory case study. So these are the various aspects of case studies. They're very, very flexible. And that flexibility is two edged. One is from one perspective, um, a lot of researchers downplay the value of case studies 
because they are so generalizable, um, they can be applied to anything and you can explore anything. But that also makes it very, very useful um, when you don't have another research methodology to use, you can always generally fall back on doing a case study. Um, that said, there are limitations to case studies. Probably the greatest one is that because so much of it is based upon the interpretation of the patterns being expressed by the researcher, it's very much open to bias. Now, there are ways of mitigating that. Uh, probably the most fundamental approach is triangulation, where we might see something occurring with one group of students in a school. So we wouldn't then automatically say that that is a phenomenon that's inherent in this case. We would look to see whether or not that phenomenon is also being expressed, say, with other groups of students. Um, are the teachers also experiencing the same phenomenon? Are parents experiencing it? If we can get a number of distinct data sources and they all agree, then that is known as triangulation. And that strengthens the assertions of the patterns that we're seeing in the case study. So bias is a significant aspect there, and we try to mitigate that bias as much as possible um, by being open and detailing how the research is conducted and the influences that are upon the researcher and how the researcher is attempting to mitigate and reduce the influence of those biases. Okay, so that's the fundamental outline of case studies. You will be conducting your own case study as your final portfolio item and presenting that. And you need to decide upon the case that you are going to explore and the boundaries of that case. Now, it may be your, um, an educational organization. It might be a school or a classroom that you're involved with. If you're studying full time, it might be a course that you're involved in, or you might look at a university, or you might look at a country. You then need to decide whether or not it's going to be a single case or multiple cases. I would suggest for the um, sake of simplicity, you uh, limit yourself to a single case. But multiple cases can be very useful in providing comparison between different groups and organizations and countries and things of that nature. And we'll discuss some other things in later sections. But for now, think about what the case is you're going to explore. And we'll discuss that further in the tutorial.